Hello and welcome to Elector News Bytes, our show dedicated to updates from the world of electronics and semiconductors. I'm your host, Stuart Cording, the electronics reporter. In this month's show, we'll be exploring new automotive radar technology that will make our roads safer, finding out how you test your compiler, discover a versatile high side power switch, look at a new single ball computer and its support, decode signals from space, and look at a power saving update for your microcontroller's debugger. But first, the outlook for chip deliveries remains grim for some businesses, with many continuing to complain about long lead times across the entire spectrum of semiconductor devices. But things may be starting to look up. In a recent report by KPMG, 65% of industry leaders interviewed believe that the supply shortage would ease in 2023, while just 20% thought it would last into 2024. Automotive also came top of the list as the current revenue driver, pushing wireless technologies into second place. Internet of Things, cloud computing and artificial intelligence which ranked third to fifth. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the metaverse was ranked last in the list of 10 sectors, as developers struggle to show value add for users with expensive headset technology. Talent, however, remains an ongoing concern, with four-fifths of respondents in the report highlighting an ongoing need for specialists, and two-thirds placing talent development and retention in the top three of their strategic priorities. Solid Sands, the world leading testing and qualification technology provider for compilers and libraries, announced a major new update to SuperGuard, their requirements based test suite for C standard libraries. Thanks to the addition of 200 additional tests to improve code coverage, SuperGuard can now handle the full range of C standard library versions, as defined in the C11 and C18 standards. The test suite creates reports providing development teams with full traceability back to requirements derived from the ISO C language specification. This makes it ideal for those developing and maintaining C library implementations for safety critical applications. Controlling inrush currents in high power applications is a challenging task but this situation may have got easier with the introduction of the AP22980 from Diodes Incorporated. This new device is a versatile, single-channel high-side power switch offering three levels of slew rate control. The N-channel MOSFET includes a charge pump and offers an RDS on of just 5.1 milliohms, enabling loads of up to 6 amps to be controlled with minimal voltage drop and power loss. Slew rates of between 1 and 15 millivolts per microsecond are also possible, and the switch is compatible with logic levels of 1.2 to 3.3 volts. The switch targets applications in portable solid state data systems where its 60 microamp quiescent current will be valued, as well as computer hardware and edge based data centers. The AP22980 is available in a WQFN1520 package and costs around $27 in thousand piece quantities. Raspberry Pi is often the focus of developers when searching for single board computers, but as is often the case, others are looking for a piece of the action too. OKDo, OK manufacturers of the recently launched Rock series of SBCs, has announced a strategic partnership with the RS Group the respected UK-based industrial product and service solutions provider. This will grow the engineering community around their products, leveraging the collective power of the 1.5 million strong Design Spark community. Through this, they hope to improve the documentation and support around their single board products targeting IoT applications. Space exploration has been back in the news with NASA's successful Artemis 1 mission. Launched on November 16 from the Kennedy Space Center, it is the first stage of a series of missions that will take humans back to the moon, a feat last achieved in 1972. 
astronomers around the world tracked the Orion spacecraft during the mission, just like the team at the Bochum Observatory in Germany. According to Thilo Elsner, head of the Bochum Observatory, they also tracked the Apollo missions during the 1960s, but in those days the signals were analogue. Today the data is sent digitally as narrowband signals, but they are overlaid with noise. Thankfully their 20 metre parabolic antenna was able to capture them, even when the spacecraft was nearly 300,000 kilometres away. But the next challenge was in decoding that data. Aronia, the renowned specialist in RF measuring, tracking and monitoring technology, stepped in to help. Providing their Spectran uh, V6 Spectrum Analyzer and RTSA Suite Pro analysis software, which runs on a standard PC, the Bochum team now has the equipment they need to visualise and evaluate those signals captured from space. The cost of energy is constantly in the news as its price continues to rise, but thanks to a software update, your debugger's contribution to your electricity bill may now be lower. Sega Microcontroller, the embedded system specialist from Germany, have added standby and eco modes to their popular line of J-Link debug hardware. Through a combination of dimming the device's LEDs, reducing clock frequency and features of the EMBOS Ultra operating system, Power consumption can be reduced from 1 watt to around half a watt. The new power saving modes can be optionally engaged by the user and have no impact on the debugger's performance. While the power saving seems minimal, it actually results in a 5 watt hour saving each day at your computer's power outlet. Across 100,000 J-Links, this delivers a 500 kilowatt hour reduction, enough to power 50 German households. The automotive industry continues to search for ways to improve car safety, and part of the solution is better sensors. I spoke to Matthias Feulner, Senior Director of Marketing for Automotive Radar, to learn more about their new SAF85 family of single-chip radar. Hi Matthias. Now, radar has been around as a sensing technology for some time. What has held it back from mass deployment in the automotive industry? So um, challenges that we've seen in the past, um, maybe to just uh, mention two of them. So uh, one of the challenges was in particular uh, in the context of widespread uh, deployment of uh, cost efficient uh, NCAP safety sensors that was producing cost efficient sensors and uh, the introduction of RF CMOS for automotive radar was a key turning point. And with our first generation RF CMOS back in 2018, uh, when we put that into production, that was a key enabler for widespread delivery of cost efficient uh, radar sensors for safety purposes. The other item I would mention is that traditionally radar sensors, they've had a very limited uh, resolution capability, different from cameras. But we've seen that change in the past years. So radar has made progress, enhancing its uh, resolution capability, enhancing its capability to detect two objects closely situated next to each other and separate those objects. And now we are as well adding so-called 4D sensing capability that allows the radar to as well sense in the elevation uh, dimension which gives us uh, the possibility not only to detect and separate the objects, but as well to do more of object classification in a similar way that cameras have been able to do. So today, what we typically see is that uh, most cars are now equipped with as many as three sensors. So you will have one in the front that serves for automated emergency braking and cruise control uh, purposes. And you have two in the back at the corners that serve for blind spot detection functionality, see objects that are not captured by the mir mirrors of the vehicle. What we expect by 2025, that is that most mid-range vehicles, they will likely be equipped uh, as a standard configuration with as many as five radar sensors. So one in the front and four at the corners 
while at that point in time, premium vehicles, they might be equipped with more than 10 radar sensors. So forming a 360 degree radar cocoon or a 360 degree radar belt, as you would call it. So overall, a lot more sensors being installed uh, in the future. NXP has had a radar offering for some time. What development are you announcing today? So today's announcement is about a true single chip radar, which integrates in a 28 nanometer RFC MOS process, uh, both the transceiver, both the millimeter wave front end, as well as the digital processor, the radar MCU, that used to be done previously in two different chips, because uh, historically you would pick the ideal processes for the digital processor on the one hand and for the millimeter wave front end on the other hand. Now that we've invested pretty early on into our CMOS in 2018 already with our first product release, having introduced our second generation RF CMOS to production this year, and now stepping it up once more with the 28 nanometer RF CMOS single chip, the first 28 nanometer RF CMOS single chip in the market, that actually allows us to get sufficient performance for both the digital processing as well as the millimeter wave front end into a single chip. While at the same time, we've seen the requirements in particular for the millimeter wave front end substantially increasing by the fact that new mandates, new regulation aimed at enhancing road user safety um, have put more stringent requirements on the OEMs, um, detecting pedestrians, but as well detecting bicycles and detecting motorcycles that are maybe on a busy highway um, at a distance next to a much larger object. Think about a truck, for example. So we see often requirements nowadays where we are expected to detect and separate a bicycle like 140 meters or more away from the car that is next to a truck on a busy highway driving at high speed. We often see autonomous vehicles kitted out with LiDAR and camera sensors. Will these radar devices replace those technologies? Obviously, there is no one perfect sensor modality, while at the same time, a radar has made significant advantages in terms of its capabilities, high resolution sensing, reach, um, the uh, capability to detect uh, objects in inclement weather and in low light conditions. So for that reason, what we expect is that radar going forward will continue to be very much complementary with camera and camera traditionally great for perception, but now with the advantage uh, of uh, higher resolution radar, we as well get more of a radar based perception that allows us to not only detect and separate objects, but now introducing 4D sensing, as I said before, we can as well sense the vertical, uh, the vertical dimension, which allows us to more accurately classify the objects and determine whether it's a bush or whether it's a pedestrian, or whether it's a curbstone or something else altogether. And when will this new single chip radar technology be available for developers? Good question. So we are sampling the product to a number of customers right now. So we have uh, customers developing radar sensors as we speak, and uh, we'll see uh, first OEMs uh, start production with sensors based on the SAF 8500 during the course of 2024. Matthias Feulner there from NXP discussing the SAF 85, their latest automotive radar sensor. So that wraps it up for this month's episode of News Bytes. If you'd like to learn more about the technologies highlighted, check out the accompanying description and links. Should you have a news update you'd like to share, please drop me a line to tell me more. You'll find my contact details on the Elector website. Or if you prefer, connect with me, Stuart Cording, on LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter. While you're here, please like, subscribe to Elector TV Industry on YouTube and share our videos on whatever platforms you use. Thanks for joining and hopefully we'll see you on Elector News Bytes 
next time.